Welcome to Crappens. Don't wait a week for a new video. Join our Patreon at the Crappens On Demand level for instant recap access. Link in description. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to Watch Our Crappens, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker and joining me today is the wonderful and hilarious Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Hello. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Um, we are here to talk Real Housewives of Miami. A, a, amazing episode. Another amazing episode. Before we do that, real quickly, pretty much like a week away, Golden Crappies on February seventeenth. Come to the show. It's at the goal. It's at. <laughs> it's almost at the Golden Palace. A very different concept at the Palace Theater of downtown Los Angeles, February seventeenth. You can get tickets at watchcrappens.com. If you can't make it, you can always stream it by also going to watchcrappens.com. You can get your streaming key there from Moment. Thank you to our friends at Moment for arranging that. We want everyone to be able to join if possible, whether it's live or virtually. And of course, you have to vote. You know, voting matters for the crappies because what you all vote on is who is going to win the Golden Crappies this year, as usual. So go have your voice heard. The ballot is also at watchercrappens.com. So go check that out. And of course, join us here on Patreon where you can watch the, the podcast, not just listen to it with Crappies on Demand to get access to our bonus episode. This week on the bonus episode, we did a trailer trash of the new Summer House trailer that came out maybe about a week or two ago. We had a lot of fun with that one. Summer House is coming back, so definitely go check out, listen to, or even better yet, watch our bonus episode. You can watch the trailer along with us. So that's it for that. Uh, let's dive into this Miami episode. This was, this was quite quite the episode this show is so good such a good show what did you think ronnie this show is bizarre and i fucking love it i was talking to a friend yesterday who doesn't watch this show and i was like why why wouldn't why? you it's amazing it's the most cartoonishly crazy of all of them i think and that's that's some competition they've got some competition does your they friend watch the most cartoonish they're the brightest most colorful clothing and I, it's just crazy i love this and it's a straight woman by the way my friend oh and so i'm wondering if that's what it is like is this something that's like more attuned to the gays because we're we're easily distracted by bright colors and patterns <laughs> does she watch other bravo shows <laughs> Yeah, she watches a few of the Housewives, but she's like, oh, I don't watch, because I said something like, oh my God, Miami's insane tonight. And she's like, oh, I don't watch that one. That's wild. I think yeah. that like people, they have their Housewives shows and it's hard to get them to add more because people are not necessarily like us where we just watch everything on Bravo. People will watch some Housewives shows, they'll watch some other shows, so they can't take on so many Housewives shows. But the truth is, Miami has been like just outstanding and um i guess if you're listening to this and you don't watch miami there's probably not a lot of people that just listen to this and don't watch miami but if for some reason you are that person you should watch miami because it is really so so good and tonight's episode was really you know no exception it, it began with this gondola ride last episode we already had a big chunk of the gondola ride which was already pretty deranged but also had this major argument with Kiki and Lisa, wherein Lisa was throwing bread from the gondola at dogs, you know, on the side of the canal. And she's like, oh, well, it's better than anything that they're fed. I can guarantee you that. And Kiki's like, what the fuck? Because Kiki was raised in Haiti and in all in a in very, you know, uh, like a impoverished or I don't know if that's even, I don't know if that's the right word to use. But like, she was she grew up in similar circumstances she said and so it's like really triggering for her to hear lisa say this so we had all that energy just going into this episode so this show is not shy I, it's not like it's guys not are we being show. insensitive right now they take one clip of somebody going oh my god it's a dead baby okay they take that and they play it i think 10 times in the next yes minutes. okay so it opens with someone going dead baby dead baby <laughs> and then the guy pushing the gondola is like um this is what happened there was a man who saw a young person down drown trying to catch chicken and then he put dolls in the tree so the spirit could play but then the spirit fell out of the tree and died and they realized spirits can still die from great heights. So then there were other spirits worried about that spirit. And then 
they just kept putting dolls to make the spirits feel better. Meanwhile, it's the creepiest thing ever. You know, it's like terrifying to look at and stuff. And Lars is like, guys, what did he like say? Like, guys, like, what the fuck did he say? Like, I don't know Spanish, but like, did he say he misses Marcus? Me Piana. <laughs> I loved how he's telling a, like a serious story. The man, he saw a, a child die in the river and he put up dolls so that way the spirit could play. What the fuck did he say? What the <sighs> fuck is he saying? And then we hear again, dead baby. And we see close ups of and these creepy Marcus. dolls and Julia's crying. And Alexia's like, listen, I know it's disturbing, but it's part of the culture. Okay, <laughs> this is like the first time I, I saw Peter hit a homeless person. I said, you know what? It is not good to look at, but it's it's part of his he's an artist. You know, he's, he's a an Peter. artist. He's a citizen of Peter, and that's just how it goes. So the we're not just passing by this island of dolls. The, the boat has actually stopped there, and it's like a bathroom break at the island of the dolls. And so Julia's like, I'm not going to get off this gondola, and she doesn't even want to look. She's looking the other way, and Marisol's like, well. I'm going to run through the sea of creepy dolls because I have to go to the bathroom so bad. You know, it's a lot being an icon for the gays, am I right? I can't believe we're taking Julia to this place. Bro, bro, I think bro hired the wrong concierge for this boat ride. It's like a Vincent Price movie. It's like a Mattel graveyard. And then Adriana, <laughs> Adriana goes with her and she's like, um, you know what? I'm creeped out, but my bladder is stronger than my fear, so gotta be. I love how um, Mar Marisol is always making old timey references. She's like, oh, it's like a Vincent Price movie. <laughs> Well, so are we. I mean, I almost made that comment, but I was like, we've, I think, talked about Judith Light 12 times this week. So. Yes, but we're not trying to be young and hip. <laughs> Whereas Marisol's like, look at me. I got the newest Prada on. I'm young and chic. I'm like that lady in the Vincent Price movie. Remember that picture? <laughs> she, she makes like another reference somewhere in here. I forgot what it was. But she's like, wow, she's more, he's more pop. Adriana at, at Gay Pride has more fans than Frankie Avalon. <laughs> Here's my question. What would teeny others think about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so now Lisa goes with them to pee and there's really scary horror music playing and there's beheaded dolls everywhere. And Marisol's like, oh my God, it smells like death. And oh, God, is this upside down dead baby supposed to be comforting to me? Good God. <laughs> <laughs> and Lars is like, hold my hand, hold my hand, I'm scared, I'm scared like, not by the dolls, I'm just scared at the thought that it's already been 48 hours since I've last seen Marcus, that's scary. I'm just, yeah, I'm just like scared like, because there's like so many faces here and none of them are Marcus. <laughs> I tried to do a podcast with that doll, and it wasn't fun. <laughs> um, Adriana is very, very, um, what do you call it when you can sense things? Not clairvoyant, but sensitive. Like, she's very sensitive. Intuitive. She goes, this is giving me horrible vibes. Yeah, I think that's the point. Okay? I don't think it's just you. I don't think you're an empath in this moment. Yes, yeah. I don't think that, like, um, dirt-covered, <laughs> decapitated baby doll heads are anything but horrible. Otherwise, I believe American Girl Place would probably look like this. <laughs> And Lisa's walking around taking video on her phone. She's like, this is weird. This is weird. Look at all of these poor babies. Literally poor. These are babies that didn't wait until cheat day. <laughs> this Look is at like... these babies who never learned how to manage their money. <laughs> these are all of Lenny's exes. So, um... Wait, that sounds like I made it sound like Letty's dating babies. That's, that's, no. <laughs> I think if I walk that one back. So Adriana and Marisol, they then they go into like a room that's like full of dolls. Because every, every step they take, they just wind up in deeper, deeper doll land. And Adriana's like, you can smell the evil in the air. I'm like, well, that's not nice to say so close to Larsa. She can still hear you. Uh -huh. Um, so Adriana goes into this little shack and it's got decapitated, decapitated baby heads in jars with like fluid in them. I mean, it's just so creepy. And there's a guy in there and she's like, um, so this place probably gives a bad impression because it scares people with the dolls. No. Yes. That's the point. Okay, yeah. But what do you think? She's like, goes into a haunted house. You know what? This house could probably sell for more if it wasn't so scary. Maybe get the blood off the walls. <laughs> I know. 
you know, like you shouldn't be trying to scare people. And the producer says, what does the evil smell like, by the way? She's like cat piss. <laughs> So, so um, the guy's like, so yeah, people come here to do witchcraft, uh, that brujeria. She's like, brujeria? Oh my God. And he's like, yeah, some of the uh, dolls, their eye color will change. Or this one opens its mouth sometimes. And this one changes its face entirely. Again, Larsa's right there. She's right there. Yeah, the one we're with is uh, going to marry Michael Jordan's son, probably. He's like, oh, the ultimate brujeria. <laughs> Back on the boat, Julie's like, I want nothing to do with this place. So she's hating this, right? And um, she starts freaking out and sobbing every time she looks at it. And so the other girls are coming back, right? They're trying to finish peeing or whatever. And meanwhile, this just starts going worse and worse on the gondola. Julia just keeps looking because they're just sitting there, you know? Yeah. And every time Wait. she looks, she re-triggers herself. So she starts crying. So well, they're all waiting for Adriana. Her. They are, by the way, they're all waiting. They can't leave because Adriana's taking her sweet ass time walking through this island and Julia's like spiraling because it's so triggering. So then Julia's sobbing and Larsa goes, what? What happened? And Mary's like, um, what happened? There's dead babies everywhere. That's what happened. I know. Marisol's like, yeah, she's like, there's ba dead babies all over this place. It's and so then dark. This show is so fucking dark, and then it's still try it's still making us laugh even in the dark. What do you mean? I what know. happened, you dumbass? There's dead babies hanging from trees. And Julia's Lisa's like, this is dead. not like the gondola rides I was expecting. Like the ones in Venice. <laughs> Look, Lisa cannot stop herself from just walking somewhere and being like, that reminds me of Rome. <laughs> I know. And Alexia's crying. She's like, David, oh, I'm like, please take us, take us. So uh, Adriana finally shows up and she's like, well, I don't. She's walking slowly because she's like, well, I don't want to twist my ankle because, you know, she has issues with her ankles on vacations, apparently. So uh, then Gertie, she's like, well, I don't know what's happening. All I know is that I've been triggered. Is it the altitude? Is it the crazy dot island? Is it these girls? I'm like, it's the fact that you're wasted. And yes, you have altitude sickness and you're dehydrated. That's what's happening. So now she's feeling sick. So like, oh my God, now Gertie's feeling sick. And Julie is still sobbing. And everyone's like slowly starting to freak out. And then Lisa goes, yeah, that's why I hate getting on yachts. You can never get off. And so oh, yeah. Adriana is like now <laughs> hugging Julia and Julia is like, I just want to see duck. I just want to see duck. <laughs> so they're like, there's a duck. And Larsa goes, Julia, look, it's a baby duck. And Nicole's like, um, I think that's a leaf. <laughs> I, when I tell you that I let out the biggest guffaw, we that do. Larsa confused a baby duck, for, like a leaf for a baby duck. Cause that's like, that's like a crappens joke. Like. <laughs> Oh my God, look at that baby duck. Ah, uh, that is a leaf. But it was a, they actually showed it. They're like, not a duck. It was a leaf. <laughs> Marisol goes, it's not a duck. Well, okay, what's what's next on the itinerary, Alexia? Are we going to have dinner in a cemetery or something? <laughs> They're like, yeah, stop, maybe stop planning things, Alexia. Jesus. Look at all the ducks in these trees. It's like out of control. Like, mm -hmm. um, like I also just want to say, like when Lisa said, that's why I hate, this is why I hate going on yachts because you can never go off. That sentence is so wild to me. Like in the middle of this madness, it's like, and this is why I choose not to go on yachts. Well, first of all, <laughs> you never I mean, know when you're going to see dead babies hanging up. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a wild thing to say. Also, by the way, um, don't shoot yourself in the foot for being on a below deck episode because you know she'd be a nightmare primary guest. She'd be oh yeah, hilarious. she's gonna be the worst. She'd be throwing chicken breasts at the staff. <laughs> so um, now they're they're like, Gertie starts to throw up. So, or Gertie needs to throw up. So they're like, where's where are we gonna do? What are we gonna do for Gertie? We she needs Someone to, she goes, needs to get barf. her a bowl. <laughs> get her a bowl. Gertie's gonna throw up. I think it was Kiki. And then all of a sudden, Nicole. Just has this enormous trash bin that comes out of nowhere. I don't know how how they're where they're hiding stuff on this gondola. Also, so she has this enormous bin for Gertie, and Gertie's just sort of like, Gertie's like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I'm nauseous, I'm nauseous. Oh god, I feel not good. I don't feel good. And they're like, quiet, quiet, quiet. 
So Everyone be quiet. Yeah, she's trying to, she's barfing. Julia's trying to be quiet. I'm just trying to stop sobbing. Everyone's trying to comfort her. And then it gets quiet. No music is playing. It's just creepy as hell. And then we hear, <laughs> and the fucking mariachi band is coming on another boat. <laughs> well, well, Gertie is just trying to have silence and like just some peace so that way she doesn't throw up. All of a sudden, a mariachi band comes out of nowhere on this, on this canal. <laughs> Oh my and that comes right up to the boat and then just starts playing right in the back. Lisa's like, <laughs> Lisa's like, oh my God, poor fuff, blur. Come there's on, a everybody, dog. there's mariachi. Let's let's change the mood here. She's like, hi, I'm in music too. I'm like the Beyonce of Mexico. Okay. And there's a dog on the mariachi gondola that starts barking and Gertie just starts to puke into the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa's probably throwing sandwiches at the dog. It needs to eat. I She's care barfing. about animals. So Gertie's barfing and Marisol goes, oh, well, they're very talented. <laughs> Guys, we have to get Gertie off this boat now. Barf, barf, more barfing. Lisa's taking selfies dog with barking. the mariachi band. She's like, hold on, everyone. This is also why I don't like yachts. The mariachi band can't reach you. Uh, guys, the mariachi band's got to go. Go. Just go. Get out of here. So they leave, and Gertie's barfing more. And so now they're screaming for a doctor. And finally, they get to the dock so they can all get off this boat. It's pure fucking chaos. And so Gertie's out there now barfing on the dock. And they're like, oh, my God, we have to get her to a hospital. This is getting really bad. They're carrying her, you know. And Lisa's like, wait a minute. Did anybody see a lip gloss? It's very <laughs> important. Stop everything. Lip gloss. Anyone? I don't have another one. I don't have another lip gloss. This is the last one that Lenny gave me, and now I'm on my own. Ah. Can someone call me an ambulance? I can't find my lip gloss. Did the dog take my lip gloss? I said throw food at the dog, not lip gloss. I have my limits. I told you those poor people would steal from me. <laughs> Can someone call the mariachi band? I'd like to speak with the mariachi manager. Did you steal my lip gloss? <laughs> Um, so Alexia's so now, screaming for the doctor and she's grossed out because Gertie really is just barfing and barfing, and now, right? Gertie is like on a bench now. She's like on a bench on the side. And Nicole, of course, is tending to her because Nicole is a doctor. And she's like, okay, well, can you drink something? Like, why don't we get her something with like a little bit of sugar and salt? And Marisol goes, let's get her a milkshake. They've got milkshakes right there. Yes, that's exactly. You know what? When my friends have, have had too much alcohol and are suffering from altitude sickness, the very first thing I think of is, let's get them a milkshake. That's going to go down but real don't well. Don't you think that's just like when, when people grew up? I mean, because I feel like my parents are like that. It's like when <laughs> I was sick, I'd be like, oh, my God, Mommy, I don't feel good. I'm barfing. And she's like, you know what you need? A cigarette and a bottle of wine. <laughs> Fixes everything. Listen, nothing will make you feel better than Dr. Franzia, okay? I'm sorry Listen. preschool didn't go well, but you'll be, you'll be fine. <laughs> Listen, I remember well in an old Ethel Merman picture when someone got sick at the theater, we had to get them a milkshake and everything was better. <laughs> so then um, Gertie is in the is in the ambulance now and Nicole's with her. And she's like, I need well, Russell, I need Russell. Call Russell. No, only on FaceTime, only on FaceTime. So he's he's laughing because and, he's like, here's Gertie. You know, she goes out of town and she's calling me with completely done up. Like her hair is all gorgeous and she's in a fucking ball gown in an ambulance. Like I'm dying, you know. And like very obviously wasted too, by the way. I feel like that's like she was wasted in that ambulance. <laughs> and and by the way, the reason why the just imagine this these be these ladies being married to one of these crazy real housewives, you know, it's like <laughs> I'm calling you. Like even when she's in like real medical trauma, because she's got her cancer stuff going on right now, you know, she's got real stuff going on, and you've still got to fucking laugh because she's just so her. Exactly. And by the way, the reason why the ambulance was there was because Alexia did the classic Alexia thing when when they were saying, you know what, don't get the milkshake. She's not keeping anything down. And Alexia goes, oh, my God. Oh, my God. She, they, they, when they say when they say, like, don't give her anything, that, call 911. Call 911. Call 911. <laughs> She's always ready to call 911. Uh -huh. So um, uh, Nicole tells us, you know, Gertie's been doing through a, going through a lot. We're at high altitude. We haven't been drinking a lot of water. It really seems like she's dehydrated and we need to check her vital signs, get her hooked up to some, some vital fluid, and hopefully she'll get better and be able to help me pick out a wall texture for Anthony afterwards. <laughs> so then um, 
basically she's gonna be i think okay they're they're like making she's jokes fine. and stuff so then uh, everyone else goes back to the hotel to get into glam because it's a vacation episode so there's 10 glam scenes per episode so adriana's nervous because it's the pride festival this is the largest pride concert it's beyonce level this is rihanna level this is like super bowl halftime level <laughs> Yes, um, and just as a reminder, Adriana, you're singing one song to a track, so let's chill out. So she's just like she's like this, saying this is the moment she's been dreaming of since she was a little girl, and you know, Emilio has made career sing careers of great singers, and she cannot let him that down whatsoever. And then Kiki is calling her mom and daughter, and she's like, "Mommy got you new dinosaurs." Okay, she doesn't care. That's summer. <laughs> And then uh, everyone's getting ready, and Julia's speaking to Martina on the phone and saying how she's been kissing so many of the girls. She goes, and she's like, I'm turning everyone lesbian. Just kidding. And Martina goes, huh, well, you're going to get a toaster in the mail if that happens. Uh, the what? Toaster? Is that the same as goat? <laughs> well, we used to joke that if you turned enough people lesbian, you'd get a toaster in the mail, honey. But... <laughs> Why would I get toaster from the lesbian committee? Oh, are you on lesbian committee? It's not a real thing. <laughs> toaster happens are not real? No, oh. toasters are real. Lesbian committee is not real. I, I'm confused. So Goat. Gertie is doing her own glam, which is refreshing. And then um, Nicole comes to check on her, and she's feeling great now, you know, because she had her mm. intravenous whatever fluids, and so she feels great. And basically, I don't know, it's glam. It's, gl it's a glam, it's glam moment. So then in Lisa's glam, she's like, oh my God, I can't believe what happened to me yesterday. I got a juice box thrown at me. <laughs> she's literally saying this. She's like, I can't believe I had a juice box thrown at me. I thought she was going to say, I can't believe what happened yesterday. I was really drunk. I can't believe I got into a fight with Kiki over something so stupid. But she's like, I can't believe she threw a juice box at me. Not even my toddler's done that. All I did was feed dogs. They looked hungry. What do you mean not even your Tyler's on that? We've seen your kids running through the house with like that big that big old gun that shoots like the, the nerf things. I guarantee there have been many projectiles going towards Lisa's direction. Yeah. I hate violence, which is why I bought my children toy guns. <laughs> At Call of Duty Junior Edition. <laughs> like uh -oh. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a prude. I'm not someone like, I can't believe the children are playing these games. But she literally, like every time we saw that that sweet child, he was playing like Call of Duty and running around the house with a Nerf gun. Yeah. Alexia in her room, she's talking to Kiki and she's like, oh no, she's she's telling Marisol that she spoke with Kiki about yesterday. And then we see a clip of that and Kiki being like, listen, you know, when she was talking about the dogs not having good food and her having better dogs and what the foods, you know, that was triggering. I didn't like that. And Alexia, this I hate when people do this. This yeah, is Alexia you know saying, what? you know what, you know what? You're both right and you're both wrong. That's Alexia's way of saying, I actually was not listening to you. <laughs> I think that's Alexia saying like, um, you're completely right, but I'm friends with Lisa Longer. And so I'm not going to go against Lisa for you. Good luck. That could be that too. So, uh, so then Alexia is talking to Marisol and she's like, oh yeah, well, you know, Kiki was saying that she like, she thinks Lisa's so entitled. And when she speaks to people, like she thinks it's all about her world. And Marisol's like, well, you know what? She needs to get ungrumped, sort of like Catherine Hepburn getting into skirt once in a while. Am I right? Oh my God. What did you say? Ungrumped? Because I thought you said on grinder. They sound exactly <laughs> the same. Isn't that hilarious? I said something gay. It's gay pride day. <laughs> well, you know what? Grinder, grumped, they're both right and they're both wrong. Mm -hmm. So then uh, that's my that's my app, grumped. I would be on that one. I'm not really on Grinder, but I would be on grumped if I could just go on there and find people to be angry with. <laughs> I'll go on right now. Let me tell you something else I hate. Long checkout lines. <laughs> Just everyone's aunt. Let's get off on complaining about things. So uh, now they all show up in the lobby and Julia. There's a grumpy person seven feet away from you. I'm like, oh, yes. So, someone just got annoyed about something five feet away. So uh, Julia comes down to the lobby and she has a sign that says, Viva Adriana. But she's misspelled Adriana's name and everyone is like laughing about it because she's supposed to be Adriana's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> but at least she made her a sign. None of us did that. 
blink in Spanish, blink in Spanish, blink in Spanish. <laughs> And then uh, everyone gathers and they go to Gay Pride. It's time to go to Gay Pride. And Adriana's like, oh my God, the organizer told me it's 200,000 people. It's going to be on Telemundo. This is crazy. And then Gertie comes down and they're cheering for her. And then Lisa comes down and she's like, oh God, should I sit over there? And Mary Soul says, uh, next to Kinky on this bus? Well, don't give her a dirty look while you do it. <laughs> she's like, well, I just don't want drama. I had the emotional day of my life yesterday. Please, no violence against me, please. <laughs> Do you know what it's like to have a small box of Apple and Eve thrown sort of to your hip area? Horrifying! So uh, they get to this plaza and it's really big and there's like a lot of stuff. There's like blocks and blocks and blocks of people. And they go to the VIP area. I love they go to the VIP tent and it's just like a tent that has two tables in it with some like rainbow fans on it. And I was like, wow, what a great VIP experience. <sighs> and um, Lisa's like, um... All right, Kiki, we're not going to have trouble today, right? And she's like, I don't hate you, Lisa. Listen, I love you. And she goes, okay, well, then don't sh throw shit at me. She's like, oh, she's God. Like, okay, so like, here, we, here we go with Lisa starting this shit again, okay? So then they're in the tent later, and Lisa's dancing around, and Kiki's dancing around, and she does, like, a kick thing. And Lisa's like, oh, what, are you going to fight me again? She's just <laughs> trying. She's trying it. This fucking Yeah, lady. she's like... She's being ridiculous. So then Adriana's backstage and she's like very nervous. She's really, really nervous. And she's worried that like, this isn't like what happens. Like, like if she doesn't land properly from her lift, is she gonna look like a turkey that was just killed on Thanksgiving day? And like, this is gonna be a career moment. I'm like, I hate to be this person because it is a really, really exciting thing. And if I got to perform at Gay Pride for one song in Mexico City, I too would be very excited about it. But I also know well enough that one song at Gay Pride at 2 p.m. is not going to launch you into the stratosphere in the world of music. Let me tell you one thing I've learned from Gay Pride um, and Gay Pride performances specifically. We literally expect nothing. <laughs> so. And let me let me tell you what a Gay Pride performance sounds like to about 70 percent of the people that are there. This is what all you can hear. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're like, wait, what was that? That's all it ever sounds like. Yeah, so she does it. You know, she does her thing. And she's obviously tracked, right? And Mary Sue's like, wait, is she lamp syncing? Or sing Are we really worrying about that right now? She's singing Miami is fire at Gay Pride. <laughs> Just leave the woman alone. All right. <laughs> Maris, Marisol horrified by songs on track. She's like, wait a second. I didn't, you know, Dizzy Gillespie didn't do this. Yeah. So, you just taped a picture of your face on a 7-Up can and called it cockies. <laughs> so let's just not worry about that right now, okay? So she sings Faya, which is always welcomed. I love that song. And everyone's dancing. And then uh, and it's over. And she's, like, really happy. And everyone's really happy for her. And she's, like, doing an interview with, like, a local podcaster or something like that. And everyone's just very happy. And they say, you know what? Tonight we are going to party. Yes. Okay, so now they're back at the hotel, and Lisa's glam guy is doing her hair, but hangers are hitting him in the head. And she's like, oh, my God, you don't like, why are hangers hitting you in the head? Don't, don't be so close to the hangers. Come over here. I mean, Jesus Christ. He's like, ow. It was a chicken. Just say thank you. I know. <laughs> it's better than what he gets at home, I'll tell you that much. I wrote down the same note, Ronnie. I said, here, here have some chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Slaps him in the face with it. And then Gertie calls Russell. She's feeling a lot better. And then um, Alexia is having them over for like pre-drinks before they go down for Pride. So Lisa comes over and she's like, can I have a skinny margarita? And she's like, no, we don't do skinny here in Mexico, okay? I can't with these skinny bitches. Like allergic to sugar? Why not be allergic to Lenny or things that like really harm you? <laughs> I thought this was going to be the beginning of a fight. I thought Lisa was going to say, what? You're going to shame me right now? How could you do that? I was so prepared for it, but it didn't happen. After so anyway, all the Lisa... mental torture you just saw me go through. <laughs> so Lisa throws a chicken breast at the bartender and gets her drink. And then Kiki walks in and hugs Lisa because they're, you know, they're mending. And Lisa's like, oh, are you going to throw a juice box at me? And Kiki's like, come on, stop. Stop with this already. She's like, I'm just asking. And she says, why do you say this? Do you ever see me uh, go around throwing drinks at people, Lisa? And she's like, well, I'm making a joke because you threw a drink at me. And she's like, okay, well, it's not time for a joke now. And she's like, yeah, she's really making it tough to move. 
past this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we see a clip of the 10 times that Lisa has just said it throughout the day, trying to get on her nerves. Yes, and don't throw shit at me. Are you going to fight against, fight me again? Are you going to throw a juice box at me? And in her mind, she's like, I'm just trying to break the tension by making light of it. But there is no tension. Kiki is fine, and you're actually just resuscitating the tension. Yes. So then, um, let's see here. So Kiki's like, oh, God. So Larsa is like, would I miss Kiki? Like, why is it so weird? Because Lisa and some girls go outside. So now it's just Larsa and Kiki. And she's like, listen, I just got here, but Larsa's first thing she says to me is don't beat me up. I mean, come on. And Larsa's like, yeah, I think she's like making it worse. But like in her mind, like I feel like she feels like, like Kiki was like making it worse. Like, but like she feels like Kiki was aggressive, but like it was Lisa's fault. She was like, the one who initiated it, like. Yeah. So I do feel like she owes Kiki an apology, like, just yeah. the way Marcus owes me a phone call, because we haven't spoken in about 10 minutes. Like, oh my god, I wonder what Marcus is doing like What's Marcus right now, doing like, like? Oh my god. What does Marcus feel about this, like, hi, it's Larsa, this is my podcast with Marcus. Hi, Marcus. <laughs> I'm not letting this happen today. So... Then we go out to the patio and Lisa is talking to Nicole and Alexia and she's like, me and Kiki aren't great today. She should sit over there then. I don't, I don't want to near me. And Nicole's like, well, I don't think that she likes that you're like suggesting that she's aggressive because like right when you see her, you're like, don't fight with me. And Lisa's just looking at her like, yeah. <laughs> Lisa does the old classic thing. I was just making a joke about it. I'm trying to move on. I'm sure Lisa, Lisa seems like someone who would totally appreciate it if someone makes a joke about her situation or, or anything like that. And Alexia is like, oh, well, yeah, you know, but like, it's kind of like passive aggressive. Okay. You know, no, Lisa, it's true. It's, it's like passive aggressive. Like when Alexia is, when Alexia is, you know, <laughs> like, like saying, no, this is bad. You know, you're in Yeah. When it's bed. too much for Alexia, you know, you're in trouble. And she's <laughs> yeah. like, well, listen, I swear I was trying to move past it, but you, uh, I was trying to move past you throwing objects at my body. Okay. That's, 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 that's what she I'm trying not, to do. She did not <laughs> throw a knife at you or something like that. Yes. Violence is never the answer. Yes. Kiki shouldn't have thrown something, but let's not have a false equivalency that Kiki throwing the juice box is you know as bad if not worse than lisa standing up over her and being really obnoxious and being like shut the fuck up i'm sorry lisa is 100 percent in the wrong here yeah lisa sucks i've never seen somebody turn goodwill this quickly i mean it's it's, it's actually pretty amazing it's hilarious i love it <laughs> i mean it's, that's a talent so lars is like okay so like what do you want to do like because like I'm trying, I'm trying, like, trying to explain, like, to Lisa. Meanwhile, Julia is coming. She's like, oh, my God, my vagina is hanging out. It's crazy. So she comes, and she's, like, waiting for a drink while they're gossiping. And Larsa's like, well, I'm trying to, like, explain to Lisa, like, like, I feel like, like, I listen to her because, like, we're friends, like, but, like, other people, like, are, like, tired, like, of it. And Kiki's like, well, I'm tired of it. She's fucking selfish. And they make a comment about those people who live down by the river. And then we see a clip of Lisa being like, I promise you, they get worse than chicken. Yeah. And Kiki's like, I live that life. I didn't just like get up and lay on my back and get fucked by a plastic surgeon. <laughs> and then boom, I have millions. <laughs> and then we get up and Larsa looks away like, okay, well, okay. That went a little like far like, I feel like. That went a little far like, but we were all thinking it like. So... <laughs> So then Julia, meanwhile, Julia has been around, I guess, like getting her drink or something, but she's listened to all this. So she goes outside, she's like, three kisses from God and toaster oven. And Lisa's being like, you know what? You guys are right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just not going to talk to her. I think that she should apologize. So I love that Lisa's takeaway from what the women are saying is not to say, okay, I'll dial it back. It's to say, you're right. I'm just not going to say anything. I'm the victim. I'm the comedian. Oh, just call me Rob Schneider at this point. Yeah. So Julia's like, oh, well, it is heating up there. I couldn't help but listen while I was not listening. My cucumber or vodka thing was being made, and she was saying things about you. She's like, what's she saying? She thinks you're an entitled, spoiled girl. You are the what? <laughs> the what? The opposite of God. The worst of all time. <laughs> 
She thinks I'm an entitled spoiled brat. By the way, Julia did not say brat, but Lisa took it there because I think she knows it's true. And she goes, you see what I mean, guys? I love Lisa talking shit about Kiki outside. And then she finds out Kiki's talking shit about her inside. And she's like, what? How could she do that to me? Right. So then um, Nicole's like, oh, my God, Julia. Like, I know she likes to use her mouth to kiss people, but like she needs to kiss and like stop creating more drama. So Gertie comes and so she brings some weird energy. She's got this shirt with like hands on her boobs and yeah. her and her it's legs like, or her thighs or whatever or her hips. And she's like, she comes in and she goes, Well, hello, Clarice. So yeah. Me. I was like, okay, we could have a silence of the lambs moment. <laughs> if you want. So I guess it's not I didn't know where the I mean, silence of the lambs was coming from, but that shit was Yeah, funny. I was like, I guess it's gay pride. We can talk about Jodie Foster. So Nicole, so that, so yeah, she's like, I'm not gonna drink today. And then Adriana enters, and Alexa's giving out bracelets for the party downstairs. And Lisa has gone to the bathroom, and Nicole is telling Kiki and Larsa that basically Julia just went outside and told Lisa everything that they were talking about inside. Yeah. Okay. So then um, Alexia gives out bracelets for this party they're going to, right? And Lisa's just like giving looks. <sighs> and we find out Marisol's not coming. She's vomiting three times milkshakes. <laughs> my milkshake brings my soul to the bathroom mm -hmm. so gertie is like oh she's she's nauseous too and then alexa keeps alexa keeps saying she vomited three times three, three times. times she vomited three times three, three times. times what's yeah. one more than two three, three that's times. many times Barf. so now we go to mondrian pride nothing like celebrating in your hotel lobby <laughs> your, at, at your hotel lobby happy hour party so they're cheersing to adriana and um lisa's like well Today I wanted to have fun. I was open to receiving Kiki, but after hearing how spoiled I am, I'm not in the body mood. So of course she's gonna ruin everybody's night yes. again because she hasn't ruined enough fucking events with her drama. You so know what's here a really she comes again. You know it's a really good way to prove to people that you're not a spoiled brat, sulking at the party <laughs> <laughs> and then making everybody leave. I'm not in the party mood. She is the worst. Meanwhile, Larsa literally does not care what's happening in the world. She's just over there with her phone, filming herself with one of the biggest phone lights I've ever seen. I know. <laughs> like, I'm surprised she didn't have an assistant there holding it for her. She has like a Klieg light attached to her phone. Yeah. So Julia, uh, Julia, then, Julia then sits down to Lisa and kind of like reads her. Sort of like in a, in a plucky way. She's like, okay, so the group, this is what everyone feels like. And this includes both castmates and also production. So I'm just the messenger here, but the whole group is feeling that they've been giving you a lot of empathy for a year. And we want you to kind of snap out of it because you're like really annoying to a lot of people. And you are the bad, just because you're the bad, there is not excuse to tell us to shut up. And I agree with that. And honestly, we all left behind your back when you drove a Honda because you were so stupid at it. And like everyone thinks that everything you do is like very, very annoying. And you know what? Even if you want a toaster, we wouldn't even give it to you. That's it. Julia just comes out of nowhere with <laughs> Gertie is next. Gertie is next to this, and she turns to Nicole. She goes, "Ah, uh, Nicole, she's telling her everything. She's going to blow." <laughs> and Lisa's like, "I don't need anyone to tell me when to snap out of it. I'll tell you that." But they're saying that um, you're entitled to, and maybe you shouldn't be entitled. She goes, "Oh yeah. Well, if anyone thinks I'm grieving or taking too long." They don't have to. They don't have to deal with it. Then they just don't have to deal with me. <laughs> not one person here has my back. These are not my people. Okay. Well, guess who your people are? The people that you pay, because literally <laughs> nobody else wants this. Twenty four hours a day. You ha you going through something bad doesn't mean that everyone should be subject to your bullshit. Twenty four hours a day for years on end. Okay. Yeah. Why am I not allowed to feel and no, let my emotions Christ. out? These are supposed to be my life. If you prick me, do I not bleed? If you put me in a Honda Civic, do I not cry? If you add me a chicken breast, do I not toss it into poor thing? <laughs> if you take me to Mexico City, do I not try very hard to make it either Tokyo or Venice? Uh. So Lars is like, come on, Lisa, like we're here for you, like. And she's like, uh-uh, no, I don't want to dance with drinking that fun. Uh, I'm not the mood for this. So they all leave because Lisa's throwing a fucking fit. So they all go to the same room, I guess back to Alexia's room. And Lars is like, I'm um, like, I guess like I feel like we like need to like power like something. I don't. 
understand why we need to bring dynamite into it. I'm not going to powwow with anyone. Okay, I want to go to bed. I've had a long couple of days. I was around poor dogs. It's a lot for me to take in, and I got to go home. And I need to figure out my life and what I and I don't want to be arguing with anybody right now. Wow. Yeah, but like Lisa, like. You said that Julia made it very clear that the group is tired of you, and but like the group didn't say that. I don't like that. And Julia's like, "Well, I didn't say tired. I said we were just, you know, we're always supporting you." We just said you are deeply, deeply annoying, and we kind of wish you were not on our TV show with us. That is all. Yeah, and Larza says, "Yeah, you know, like I'm like I rock with you, but like I have to be honest and like." When you were standing over Kiki, like, she never comes for anyone. And then you're telling her, like, shut the fuck up. That's not who you are, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm supposed to be on trial on Monday, and I don't want to feel like I'm on trial now, because this feels like I'm on trial. It feels like a trial. What I'm trying to say is, you ever heard of a thing called court? Well, this feels like a court. You know what I'm saying? Does anyone understand my analogy? <laughs> so then um, Adriana's like, let her cry about her divorce, you know? She's like, it's, it's not even over yet. She still has, she still has time to cry. <laughs> And Lars is like, we've given her lots of hall passes. And you know what, like, she's like cheated on me 10 times. Wait a minute. <laughs> Did I give her the wrong thing? <laughs> Oops. Um, yeah, they're just kind of like, you know, you can, we want you to feel and you're going through a tough time, but like everything comes back. Like if we're talking about one thing, you bring it back to that. And we've had enough of that. So Kiki's well, they're also like, just like, listen, we're talking about one day when you were being an asshole. It's not like we don't want to hear from you, blah, blah, blah. And so Kiki is crying now. And she's uh, she tries to explain to her, instead of having like a housewives fight about it, she's like, okay, I'm going to really explain to this chick because she doesn't seem to get it, right? So she's like, look, Lisa, you don't know anything about me. I And she's crying. And she says, I was kicked out of my house when I was 15. You know, and you guys all live these beautiful lives. And I've worked really hard to get here to be with you guys. And I just want you to listen to me. You know, no one cares. This was so fucking sad, by the way. Yeah. She's like, no one cares to even ask me one question. I mean, no one says what's going on in your life. And Lisa, I have two kids. I don't have anybody helping me. You don't even know my son's name. Do you know my son's name? What's my son's name? And it just goes, Utz. and everyone kind of looks away because, you know, Lisa's none of them like, know. Uh, right? Yeah, none of them know. Lisa's like, uh, is it Ebenezer? She's like, no, this is the life you have. Like, even though you're going through a divorce, I'm sorry that you're going through it, and I'm, but I'm going through hell too, and I just don't bring my problems on people, on any of you guys. Just because I don't talk about my issues, I have issues too. And like, you know, and by the way, people handle things differently. Some people like to, they don't want to burden other people. Other people like to vent to their friends, and that's perfectly fine. But Lisa just doesn't seem to understand how one way it seems to be with her. So then Lisa is saying, well, and it looks like Lisa might be getting it because she's yeah. just listening to her and she's kind of nodding. And then she goes, well, anything I say is going to be wrong. So I'd just rather not say anything. But I'm sorry. What you? So of course you're the victim in all of this. Of right. course. So she goes, okay. So so then she tries another way, and she's like, okay, I'm gonna really explain this to her because she still doesn't get it, right? So yeah. she goes. So what you don't see about what I'm saying is those little houses that we saw on the canal, that took me back because I was raised in those houses. So when you're talking about the dogs being not fed, I felt like. Just because of people that live like, just because there's people who live like that doesn't mean that they don't feed their dogs. And Lisa's, and Lisa's like, but that's not what I was saying. That's not what I was. Still not getting, how are you still not getting this? I am so Well, she's making it about Lisa. her. She's thinking about so her. I'm so embarrassed for her. She's not oh. sitting and listening to Kiki. She's saying, you're twisting my words and making me look like I'm an insensitive, entitled asshole and I don't appreciate it. And the bartender's like, ow, stop throwing chicken at me. Sorry, I know you need it. Oh my God, so you Kiki's are like, an Lisa. insensitive entitled she's asshole like, you are the worst i can't believe i ever rooted for you you're fucking terrible and lisa's wow. like i'm talking now i'm talking now and kiki's like you're just see you're doing it again and by the way there sh they show pictures of kiki's house it it was it was base it was tiny and it was it was not unlike the houses we saw on the canal and right. so it was definitely you know a tough environment to grow up in and Kiki's trying to explain this, and she's like, you know what? Like, you're doing it again now. If you want to get that level, I can get there. And then Lisa's like, but you're talking over me also. And she's like, but I'm trying to explain to you why I made that comment. And then Lisa goes, but I can't fix the trials of childhood drama, okay? I was like, oh my God. She goes, God. I'm not a therapist, which I'm like, so you're just gonna like vent to these women for a year 
And then the moment someone shares something about their life with you, you say, I I'm not a therapist. I can't help you. I can't help you. Yeah. It's so, like, so it deeply is obnoxious. Terrible. It's bad. This is the worst. Um, listen, Lisa is like the queen of bad lucks. Like, she puts them on all day. She has a dry cleaner rack in her house to spin those bad looks around, okay? And this is a bad look even for her. This is terrible. Yeah. So Lisa's like, why are you getting mad at me? And she's like, oh my God, I open up about my childhood and this is what you say? You are selfish. And then she goes, and you know what? Maybe what's happening with you and Lenny is karma. And it's like, oh. And they're like, oh. Everybody's like, no, 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 no. Everyone just has that like, oh my God, you guys are, you you just won this fight. What are you doing? I don't know. I don't think she lost it perfect, to be honest. She they certainly just know that didn't with the audience, you know. But Yeah, wow. like, oh, don't say that. She goes, karma's a bitch. But honestly, like, I, that would, that would probably be a friendship ender for me. If I had to sit and listen to Lisa for a full year, on and on and on, now Lenny did this, interrupting whatever everyone else is talking about, bringing it to that. They went to a, the, the cathedral last week to pray for Gertie and Lisa made it about Lenny again. And they listen to this over and over and over again. And the moment you share a hardship from your life, she wants to not even touch. She's like, well, I can't fix that for you. Sorry, why are you talking to me about that? I can't fix that for you. Like, yeah. you know how many times they probably wanted to say that to her? Oh my goodness, Lisa, awful, 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 awful. awful. Oh, this is really, hilarious. really bad. But by the way, hilarious. What a hilarious episode. It, like, that's the kind of delusion I live for on these shows. People just like, like what are you thinking? What are you uh. thinking? Yeah, really bad. So great episode. Really, really bad. Um, but overall, what a what a good episode. Good season. Great show. Um, everybody, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, and we will catch you on the next episode. Bye, everyone. Bye.